that happened in Breezy Point uh, toward the end of when the hurricane was blowing through was a house fire that just ignited a firestorm in the Breezy Point section of Queens, which if you don't know, is the barrier island all the way south, south of, uh, of Queens that, you know, sort of lines Long Island, lines the, uh, you know, Queens, and they just saw the fire, and it was absolutely terrible. Over 100 homes were lost, and what was incredible is that the firefighters did everything they could, and they really just couldn't get there because of the water, and um, it was, there were 200 firefighters, uh, volunteer firefighters, and firefighters from the New York City Fire Department, and one of those volunteer firefighters uh, joins us now on the phone, Patrick Lennon, just Mike 17 Grace. years old. And first of all, Patrick, uh, what is it like fighting a fire in your own neighborhood? Uh, yeah, it was it was terrible to see. You know, that night um, after the, the storm surge, it was just kind of chaos uh, going around. We were supposed to be doing search and rescues over near our firehouse with a lot of the elderly that were trapped in multiple homes. Couldn't really, they had nowhere to go because the water was, you know, taking over their their first floor. They, you know. Not, not everybody had a second floor to go to, to, you know, get safe. And then later on, about 9 o'clock, uh, from the top floor of our firehouse, we saw an orange glow in the distance over a bunch of the houses. And, uh, you know, we knew it was a fire, of course, because there was honestly not much we could do because of the freezing water that was, you know, chest high all around the town. So, you know, we were kind of just watching for a while and getting people away from the smoke. And, you know, a lot of uh, guys in my fire department were over there. And we had a small Zodiac rescue boat uh, getting people out. Um, of the houses that they could. I mean, some of them, some people left on their own before the fire reached their house. Uh, the wind just kept pushing the fire from block to block to block. And in that section of the region, we call it the wedge, because the houses are very close to each other. So, you know, people were getting out as quickly as they could. And, uh, you know, we did what we could, and the fire kept spreading and spreading. And, Patrick, so people understand, um, you know, there's Roxbury, Breezy Point, and Atlantic Beach. They all have their own volunteer fire departments. And then the New York City Fire Department came to help you guys out. And, and, um, when, how emotional was it considering that, um, from what I understand, some of the firefighters responding were watching as their own homes were burning down to the ground? Yeah, I mean, you know, a friend, a firefighter of mine said, you know, a guy who's been there for about 20 years, he said, I never, you know, saw myself standing there hopeless, like a civilian, not being able to put out a giant fire cone in my, in my own town, and that's how it felt for us, because, you know, we've always been out there, every fire, uh, our PFP and Point Breeze fire department, the two, uh, volunteers, Fire bombs in Breezy and then Roxbury Fire. We're always the first ones there for the fire, any fire in Breezy. And this one, you know, we couldn't even get to because we couldn't get pressure on hydrants. We couldn't get anything. And then city, when City came, that's when we started to be able to put it out at about 10 o'clock. City came down with about 15 city rigs. There was guys from uh, uh, 137 uh, in Fort Children and any any company that could get down there, we had there. So they had a lot of help. And they were drafting from the water on the ground. You know, they had a vacuum, they weren't even using hydrants, they were just pulling the water out of the ground, uh, stretching it through their hoses, and trying to put it on fire, so. Hey, Patrick, this is uh, Rich Princeton. Uh, one of the things that was amazing watching it, water was up to the wheel well level of these trucks, right? I mean, give a frame of reference, you guys jumped into Zodiacs because, talk about how high the water was um, for you guys to try and get through to get to these uh, these houses. Yeah, it was, it was really tough, I mean, uh, it's the water, I've been telling everybody, went from about, you know, like ankle deep water to about chest deep water in probably a half hour. The bay and the ocean met extremely quickly. And, uh, you know, we, you know, when you're walking down small blocks, you know, small sidewalks with houses on both sides, you, there was a current that we'd have to fight against a lot of times. You know, we're grabbing fences and using them as kind of like, you know, like hiking gear, I guess. So, uh... Um... When this all said and done, and we saw the fire again, sitting from the comfort of the studio, but when we saw the fire raging, if somebody told me when this was going on that only there'd be two injuries, I would have called them nuts here. I would have assumed there'd be a huge loss of life. It, it's not an accident. I know this may not make you feel better, Patrick, but everybody's been talking about the work you guys did there. You guys were climbing on roofs. Uh, reaching over awnings, grabbing people. Talk about some of the rescues there, because it's not like everybody was out of these houses. It wasn't that you were just trying to save a house. You were trying to, and you guys did, you saved lives here. Some of the people were in some of these houses, weren't they? Yeah. Tell yeah. us about it. Yeah, I mean, you know, as soon as the fire started, we knew we had to get over there as soon as possible. That's why that, that rescue boat, we had them rescue boat one and rescue boat two. We had about four or five guys in each of them. And, you know, I'm, I'm one of the younger guys in our PSD, but some of the older guys, 
uh, Jimmy Morton and Brian Doyle and were over there, you know, immediately saving lives out of every house they could before the fire reached them. One of, them, one of which was my uncle's house. They, they pulled him out before the fire reached his house, and it was only about seven houses away, so that was really tough to hear. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's just, you know, breezy. Everything's kind of close together, you know, so as much as the fire was reaching each house really quickly, we were also able to get everybody out pretty quickly, with the, uh, even, even though the water was everywhere, so that was okay. Um, hey, hey uh, Patrick, I, I know you've guys probably heard that around there, but uh, it, it, this is, I mean, you guys do this as volunteer, uh, some guys full time, but the idea that you guys put your necks out there like you did, and I would assume part of it is the job, but also, Steve Bright, for people who don't know, it's a tight community. People know people, some people have been there for generations, different families, for people who don't know it. Everybody knows kind of everybody in the Seabright area, um, and it's one of those places where when people get to, they don't really want to leave because um, it's a great spot. Yep. And if you know Queens, it, it's just really something else. Yeah, Breezy is pretty cool, isn't it, Patrick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. um, uh, hey, um, I don't know about you, CJ, uh, but I just, uh, Patrick, I, I think uh, from everybody over here, yeah. though. Um, major thank you to you guys for doing what you did and for people who have got to understand everybody looks at the aftermath of the fire but they should really focus on the fact that there were no fatalities and it wasn't by accident it really had to do with the guys from all different companies getting in there including um, obviously the fire department but so many of the volunteer guys and finally you're 17 years old patrick um and uh, when you get as old as me and cj um you're going to appreciate just how, what you did as a kid, as young as you are. Anyway, thank you very much, Patrick. Thank you for a few minutes, and thank you for what you did out there in Breezy. Thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. Really, I'm amazing. 17 years old, uh, in, a, in a boat, pulling people out. And what I never even thought of when uh, you hear about the chest-high water is that the houses are so close together, it created a current. And then they had to hold on to the, so he said, hold on to the fences just so they didn't get washed away. They could have gotten washed away so easily. He casually mentioned his uncles. He saved his uncle. Yeah. Um, that guys are watching their own houses yeah. go down in fire. That the the water was so big they had to jump in. And you guys know what zodiacs are, right? Those basically glorified rats, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, that that they're uh, just eager to go. And again, I know we've said it, but I'm not so sure everybody full, gathers fully. It's not that there was an empty basic lot in Breezy that everybody was gone. This thing happened so instantaneous when it went from flooding to out and out full surge and, and you know, right. like he said, in the 30 minute period it went from ankle to chest if not shoulder deep water right. and then they had to pull people up in that, in that circumstance with huge raging fires going on, pulling people through roofs yeah. when they couldn't get to it on land, and they're fighting fires by literally sticking the hoses, it's suctioning the water in the ground. Right, because they, there was no way for them to get the actual, um, uh, I guess, uh, the, the pumps to work. There was no way for them to get the force of the water to come out of the pumps to work, and they were able to save the yeah. people. And as you said, nobody died. And it's just, it's an amazing work by the volunteer fire departments of Roxbury, Atlantic Beach, and Breezy, and also the, the New York City Fire Department responding, knowing, as he said, one of the firefighters watching his own house burn down. All right. Let's go now from uh, Queens um, out.